So if they've lent you 70,000, and 1% of that will be approximately 700 pounds a month. Whereas if you went to a normal mortgage company, you know, it would be a fraction of that cost. But remember, there's short-term pain, but for a long-term gain, remember why you're doing this. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Arshil Ahi, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about a topic which I pretty much get asked every day. And they're asking me the question, is it still good to buy single lets over HMOs? And I'm gonna try and give you the pros and cons for each. So before we do that, I just need a small favor from you. If you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell, every time I release a new video, you get to get notified of it. Now, I'm gonna give you some cop-out answers here as well. Don't mind saying that, because there's no right or wrong answer answer here it all comes down to your personal preference so the question that I'm going to ask you is should you still continue to buy single lets or should you continue to go for some of the more advanced high cash flow strategies such as a HMO now starting from the beginning let's think about this first thing it all comes down to your circumstances so there's you know it will depend on you and where you are in your property journey so if you're completely new to property you may not be able to jump straight into a HMO without having to own a single let first and the reason why that is is because lots of lenders will want to see you perform as a property investor first before you go off and start buying something as strategic as a HMO they want to see that you're going to be able to manage the property that you're going to be able to maintain it look after it and show your worth as a property investor now you may ask yourself the question as long as a mortgage company is being paid why do they care and the honest answer is that when they lend you the money they're lending you the money over a 25 year period. So they're not just thinking of, oh, can they manage it for six months? They wanna see that you've got the longevity to own it so that in essence, they're not having to come back and repossess it because that's the last thing that the bank actually wants to happen. They don't wanna really repossess it. They don't wanna have to take that asset. They want you to be paying the mortgage so therefore they can collect their interest and that's where they make the money off the interest of the money that they've lent you. Now, there are ways around it and I'm gonna give you a few, let's call them hints and tips. The first one is that if you don't want to buy a single let and you want to go straight into a HMO there are ways that you can do this and the first way that I suggest it's a little bit more expensive but it is a way around it you can purchase the HMO instead of buying it from by using traditional lending such as like your Shawbrooks your your Birmingham Midshires your Lloyds Banks and your HBOS groups etc you can actually use it by purchasing it with bridging finance the reason why I say bridging finance is because bridging finance is a short-term loan so for those that don't know what bridging finance is please please make sure you do your research on bridging finance. I should say here is my little disclaimer, this is not deemed to be financial advice. You should go off and get professional financial advice before you go on to do anything like this. Now, bridging finance is like short-term finance and they'll lend you that money on the basis that you're then gonna try and refinance and get yourself back onto a normal term mortgage. So let me clarify this. When you purchase a property, normally you would buy it by using like a bank like Shawbrook, but in this scenario, instead of going straight to Shawbrook, you will now go to an intermediary company. Let's call it Together Finance. There are lots of other bridging companies out there. I've got no affiliation with Together Money or Together Finance, by the way. It's just the first one that came to mind. Now, off the back of that, they will lend you the money to purchase the property. So they'll give you approximately 60, 65, 70, 75% of the purchase price, depending on your personal financial circumstances. Off the back of that, you will then run that property or you will then own that property and manage it successfully for a period of six months now after six months you can now go off and refinance this property against a traditional mortgage company like the likes of Shawbrook, Lloyds whoever it may be now why would you do that is because when you come to refinance what you're actually showing the lender that you're now trying to refinance to is the fact that you're not buying the property you've already purchased the property you're already a HMO owner what you're saying to them is that I'm already the owner I'm showing you that I've got the experience because I've been doing it I've owned it I've got it now I want to refinance away from the bridging company now onto the traditional term mortgage now the reason why I say this is a bit of a, not a risky strategy but it's a little bit more expensive because bridging finance is not the cheapest there's no secret behind that everyone knows that bridging finance is not the cheapest let's just imagine that you purchase a property that's a hundred thousand pounds and they lend you up to 70% of the purchase 
price. They may not always lend you up to 75, sometimes it may be 70, sometimes it may be 65. So first of all, you've got to check, are you going to be able to afford to purchase that property? Second of all, is that they charge a little bit more than normal. So it's normally roughly around 1% a month, 1% of the loan amount per month. So if they've lent you 70,000, and 1% of that will be approximately 700 pounds a month. Whereas if you went to a normal mortgage company, you know, it would be a fraction of that cost. But remember, there's short-term pain, but for a long-term gain, remember why you doing this because you want to own that HMO. Alternatively, the other option that we'll talk about in a second is by purchasing the single let with a view of then going on to a multi-let, but that's a more of a long-term strategy. So by going to the mortgage company or by using bridging finance, you then go to the mortgage company and say, guys, I already own the property and here's what it is. Here's how much it's producing. You can then refinance onto the main term mortgage. Now, going back to my original question, is it best to still have buy to lets and as i said they suit a certain purpose for any investor now there's lots of different investors out there that have got lots of different reasons as to why they're getting involved in property some are looking at it as a nest egg some people are looking at this as a business some people want to use this to remove themselves away from their job or their employment to get into full-time property so you need to identify what it is that you want from property and what you want it to do for you and your family now if you're looking for property to get you out of your job unfortunately as much as i hate to burst your bubble single lets aren't going to do that because single lets let's face it they're limited to what they could produce if you're running it as a family unit let's just imagine that you purchase a house and again let's stick with simple numbers at a hundred thousand pounds let me just get my trusty calculator out here so based on a house that's worth a hundred thousand pounds you're going to lend approximately 75 percent of that which is around seventy five thousand pounds now based on that your mortgage if i work on an average rate of around three to four percent on an interest only basis is going to be roughly around 250 pounds a month now take into consideration that if you're letting that house out for let's say 600 pounds a month now take out your mortgage costs at 250 pounds that leaves you with 350 pounds now we've not taken into consideration any other costs so we've not taken into consideration management costs so let's just assume that a management company is going to charge you 10 percent plus back which is 72 pounds a month so out of your 350 pounds profit so far take out 72 pounds we're now down to 278 pounds now you want to put in a contingency for things like voids bad debt maintenance etc let's put in you know a gross 10% so knock off another 60 pounds a month for that it now takes you down to 218 pounds a month now my question is that how many of these are you going to need to replace your income now if you're on an income of around 2000 pounds a month based on 218 pounds a month cash flow that this property is going to generate you'll need around 10 of those now my question is how much are you going to need to purchase 10 of these properties to get you out of your job so sometimes people don't really think about it like this. They just think, yes, I want to own property. Now, I appreciate the longevity is that hopefully the property is going to increase in value over the years, plus the cash flow. It's going to build you a nice little nest egg for the future, but it's not going to get you out of your job and it's not going to solve your immediate problem, which is getting you out of your job now. So this is why people look at high cash flow strategies, such as things like rent to rent, where you don't, it's not so capital intensive, like lease options, where again, it's not capital intensive when you controlling the asset and then they look at owning hmos which means that not only are you building high cash flow but then you also own the asset which means that along the line you're going to benefit from capital appreciation as well so going back to my point is it still worth buying buy to let if you're only looking to literally build a portfolio for a nest egg for the future then absolutely nothing wrong with that it's safe it's secure it's not going anywhere hmos can be deemed to be a little bit more hassle because you're having to deal with multiple tenants and and along with multiple tenants comes multiple problems, maintenance issues, management issues, but it can be done. It has been done. Investors all over the country, all over the world are doing it and there's no reason why you can't do it too. So before you go and jump into a HMO, understand what it is that you want that property to achieve for you and then identify, is this the right strategy for me? So there we have it, guys. You know, in a nutshell, they're both right for you. Depends on you and your circumstances, you know, but don't jump into some 
something just because you feel like it's the right thing to do for you right now. Think of what it's going to do for you over a long period of time. It's a shorter video than usual. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you've taken some content away from it. As I said at the start, do me a small favor just by pressing the subscribe button and the notification bell. As always, I've always got more free content for you. So go and check out my podcast. We release a new podcast every Tuesday. It's called The Property Rebel. You can find it on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, just to name a few of the places. As well as that, as you know, we release new content on this YouTube channel every Thursday. Again, hit the subscribe button. If you want to connect with me on social media, if you've got a question that you want me to answer, you can go to my website, which is rshilahi.com forward slash contact. If you want to connect with me on social media, go and do so by finding me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and Clubhouse, all under the handle of rshilahi. And finally, if you haven't already done so, have you downloaded the Property Investor app? So if you are looking for HMO, if you are looking for your single app, go and check out the app. We've got hundreds of them all on the Property Investor app, ready for you to take action. So two ways to get involved. You can either go to the website, which is propertyinvestorapp.co.uk, or if you've got a smartphone, go to the App Store, type in Property Investor and download it. It takes two minutes for you to do that and you'll see over 200 properties in the palm of your hand, completely free. On that note, guys, hope you've really enjoyed it. As always, stay safe, well, and happy and I look forward to speaking to you all soon. Thank you and bye-bye.